Today we're at the Royal College of Physicians in London and we're celebrating the halfway point of the current Biomedical Research Centre, the BRC at the Maudsley. This is an NIHR, National Institute of Health Research, infrastructure for mental health research where we are really trying to champion the development of new treatments, new diagnostics, new digital innovations for people with mental health problems. Whilst I've only been here two months, I've met a load of fantastic people already and I'm really looking forward to hearing some of the presentations today um, and, and learning more about what's going on and seeing how that is going to be translated into improved patient care. The BRC is held jointly between the South London and Maudsley NHS Trust and King's College London, specifically the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience. And in a way, the BRC is an infrastructure funding which really forms the glue between those organisations. It's all about trying to do things to improve patient care, bringing research uh, to the bedside. The point about this is bringing together a whole range of different researchers, uh, patients, uh, people with lived experience of disorders, clinicians, but also industry who really understand what's needed in terms of trying to develop novel therapeutics, for example. We have around 50 PhD students who are funded through the, the, the BRC, so each and every one of them have been encouraged and, and most of them are actually there presenting posters. Um, and that's a really great opportunity for people to be able to talk about their work with some of the folk like me who are uh, a bit further down their careers to actually spot the talent and understand you know, what's going on. So I'm, uh, I'm Philip McGuire, I'm in charge of the um, psychosis theme in the BRC and also the precision psychiatry cluster. And today, um, this is a prevention session, so I'm going to be talking about prevention of psychosis and specifically about the possibility of using cannabidiol. We're hearing about prevention. We're interested in looking at, for example, the way in which people with so-called at-risk mental states, so these are people who haven't yet developed a full-blown uh, mental disorder, but our hope is that we can actually intervene much earlier um, and indeed even prevent uh, the onset of, uh, of those disorders. If that was possible, it would have a massive impact in, in patients' lives. It's increasingly clear that when we look at genetic risk factors for mental health conditions, we find that the same genetic risks that, that are discovered for schizophrenia may also apply to autism spectrum conditions, epilepsy, intellectual disabilities. And the same is true for environmental risk factors. We've just had a session which we call transdiagnostics. And that's all about understanding how certain new technologies can actually be helpful in terms of understanding not just one disorder or disease, but a whole range of different processes. We've had talks about, about the immune system and mental health. It seems that you know, a significant proportion of people have um, changes to their immune system, which makes it look like they've got inflammation going on. One of the things that also we discussed is the possible um, uh, link with uh, the peripheral inflammation. So the possibility that the peripheral inflammation may be in some way a marker of what is happening in the brain. So today, course, really kind of explained a little bit about why we are interested in inflammation and how this is possibly also relevant for future treatment strategies. And we have, in fact, also after the, the sessions, the possibility to interact with other researchers who see that as relevant for, for other disorders and the possibility of kind of expanding this work. So we've also got updates on a number of major projects. Uh, the GLAD study, this is a, a study about anxiety and depression and uh, the genetics of anxiety and depression, where we've actually been able to um, use, uh, effectively crowdsource a, a large number of people to participate. And we have over uh, 20,000 people now who have, have signed up to this. I'm here today because I kind of represented the GLAD study as someone with an experience of depression and anxiety. Um, by performing a poem. But I no longer wait for the sun to rise. I wait for my heart to set so I can watch its hues as it says goodbye. I hope to see you tomorrow. I haven't changed my sheets yet and I haven't folded my clothes yet. But I wait for my heart to set every night and hope to see myself tomorrow. Thank you. GLAD study is a large-scale genetic study um, of anxiety and depression and uh, basically their aim is to get a full profile including um, 
early experiences, potential comorbidities, um, different treatments that have been tried, as well as saliva samples from every person taking part. And by doing this, um, they're aiming to, first of all, um, identify genetic risk factors and then combine that with environmental um, experience or what treatments have worked. We've also been hearing about um, the use of smartphones and wearable devices to track health. So the same technology can be used across a whole range of different disorders and we're using it at the moment in a program called Radar CNS um, in depression, uh, in multiple sclerosis and epilepsy to be able to see really whether the kind of messages you get from a smartphone or a wearable um, can tell you something about the, the trajectory of that disorder. The whole aim of uh, my placement last year was um, for me to return back to my substantive post with the uh, home treatment team as a research nurse champion. It was a good um, insight in research. You kind of think about ideas and ways of innovating yourself in practice and being able to share some of the ideas back with my team. I think the BRC has really kind of helped me to develop I think in a better scientist and a better clinicians, we, we are doing so many things that are so cutting edge to make the step into clinical practice as soon as possible. I like the fact that these lectures all gave hope of new interventions, new treatments and so much is being done. The contribution of the BRC is just incredible. It is one centre out of 20. We like to think we punch well above our weight. There's a huge diversity of activity and a real energy about how we actually use this to improve the experiences of people living with mental disorders. Thank you.